so inside zone, okay, the overview for tonight's talk, okay, um, so the zone run game. Um, I'm just going to touch on quickly um, what I call outside zone, wide zone, mid zone, tight zone, and uh, the zone read RPO, um, which has kind of turned into a little bit of dual blocking now, okay, uh, but the, the, uh, what I'll hit is going to be the mid zone part, okay, so over you, okay, so um, this is how I teach it. It doesn't mean that, uh, that the other ways of teaching it are wrong, um, but uh, it's just the way I do it. If it's different than your way, it's, uh, um, you know, everybody does it different ways, so it's all good. Um, so there are many different uh, opinions on zone names, aiming points, um, and footwork, okay? Um, and then the, the thing that, that's most important is you gotta be consistent in your teaching of your method. Uh, and believe in the, that that's the most important thing. Okay, so just hitting outside zone. Okay, to me, outside zone is uh, three yards behind the tight end is the aiming point for the, uh, the, the tailback. Um, then we'll jump to wide zone. Now you're a little bit tighter. Uh, so now you're going inside leg of the tight end. Um, wide zone is also very good to run to the open side. Uh, if you've got a, a left tackle like Big O playing for you, um, and he'll talk here shortly, um, but he uh, he's pretty good at opening up that uh, that front side B gap. So that's always nice to have. Okay, and then we get into mid zone. All right, so now with mid zone, all right, your aiming point is your inside leg of your play side tackle. All right, and then going in from that. Okay, now you got tight zone. All right, aiming points the inside leg of the play side guard. Okay, more of a downhill. <clears throat> excuse me, more of a downhill run play. All right, now you get the zone read RPO. Okay, this could be exactly the same as the tight zone in terms of uh, how you block it up front. Okay, the, uh, the thing that changes up is uh, when people use more of a duo approach to it, um, where you take the ball and get vertical with it. Um, when I had uh, Sut and Rutley in uh, Montreal, we, were, we had more of the duo approach. We, we took the ball, we got vertical and ran down the rails right now. Um, and it does change up how you block on the backside. Um, so you are more vertical on your blocks, but it, if you watch LSU film or anything like that, you'll see that it's a lot more of a vertical um, run play than anything getting across the, uh, the backside of the center, chasing the center's block, all that stuff. Okay, all right, public service announcement. Okay, so regardless of what aiming point or name you use, all right, the offensive line, the tight end, the running back need to be on the same page and teach it the same. Um, so on the call here tonight, I got... Um, Chris Sweet. Uh, I was the running backs coach in Montreal for a year and Sweeter was the O-line coach. We were together all the time talking about how, um, you know, how we're approaching things, how we're going to block up fronts. That way, when I got into my meeting with the, with the running backs, you know, I was teaching it the same way he was going to be teaching it with his guys. It just allows you to marry things up um, and it, more success in the run game. Okay. Uh, and then if you haven't heard Coach Wiley speak before, um, you'll hear about the angle of departure. Okay, it's got to match your running back's path. Okay, so if it's a wide zone, you're going to be wider in your angle departure. If it's tight zone, you'll be a lot more vertical with it. Okay, all right. So now going back to mid zone. Okay, so you can see here uh, it's the inside leg, the place I tackle. But I put these arrows on here so you can see how it's um, everybody's on the same path, right? So whether you take a lead step or you um, or you take a drop step to, to start your path off. It's all, um, depending on how you teach it, as long as you're consistent, it, it can all be great for you. Okay. So just hitting up, uh, I'm not a quarterback's coach, but I'll just tell you quickly about how I teach it. Um, so from under center, quarterback would uh, take the snap and then he would open either at five or seven, depending on which way the ball is going. And the exchange should occur roughly on his third step. All right. And then continue to boot away. Okay, that obviously changes depending on if it's split zone or not, if you have to hold up on the, uh, uh, the backside defensive end. All right, um, so from pistol, changes it up a little bit. Okay, uh, now QB, same thing, is going to open up at five or seven. Okay, and then uh, exchange should occur either on the second step or one and a half steps into it, uh, and then continue to boot away depending on uh, if you have a fullback in or not. Okay, um, now hitting at the running back, all right. Um, so the depth of the running back. Okay. So if, uh, under center, I like it at, uh, seven yards deep for the, um, for the running back. 
And then if he's in pistol, I like uh, I like his heels at eight yards. All right. Aiming point, inside leg of the play side tackle. Okay. Steps, okay, crucial for the zone to work. Okay, QB under center. Okay, I go with open. So he takes a little bit of a drop step. He, um, he crosses over, okay, and then point is, when I say point, that foot's going back down and getting right down onto his aiming point. So we do gain a little bit of lateral width to start the play, and then we get a little bit more downhill um, from under center, okay. In pistol, it's slightly different the way I teach it, all right. So we just, we open, so basically take a drop step. And then our second step points at uh, the inside leg of the play side tackle. Okay. Uh, and then like, again, st steps have to be consistent with the offensive line. Okay. Um, so for the read, all right. Um, so you got your aiming point and your read are two different things. Okay. Um, so your aiming point is your inside leg of your play side tackle. Your read is your first down lineman past the center play side. Okay. So I used to teach it where, we would start our read um, from the first guy. And then, so if the tackle right in this picture right here played out to the to uh, the offensive tackle and to the tight end, if he started playing out, then I would get his eyes to the nose. Um, and then the one nice thing when you're when you're coaching in the, in the CFL and you've got some really smart players, you start to ask them like, tell me how you truly see it. So um, one day Sutton and I were, were talking about the zone run game and I asked him, like, can you actually, after you take your eyes from your initial read, can you actually get your eyes to a next defender and read him? And his answer was great. He, he said, he said he goes from his initial read and then it opens up to that side. So if the, the if that tackle spikes right now, then he goes big picture out to the to the tight end side. All right. If the tackle continues to widen with the guard, all right, now he'll go pick big picture back and then make his read from there. Um, it, he says it's very tough to get the focus really tight on it. And uh, Sadi, I'll let you expand on that later if somebody wants to ask more questions on that. Okay. Uh, and then, so in an odd front, um, I do teach it that it's the first down lineman past the center. So I don't have him read the nose um, just so we create width and we don't find ourselves getting too tight on it. Just so we end up marrying up um, with our, our uh, O-line's path because that front side guard is going to travel. Um, to try and help out the uh, the tackle, so we don't want that um, that mic front side to trigger, and uh, if we don't have the right path with our running back. Okay, in an under front, um, now he's front side. The uh, the nose is front side on the center, um, so we will be reading him. Uh, I'd be interested to hear from uh, from Rutt and Sut on that if if they truly uh, ever looked at it that way. So, uh, and they can be honest now because I'm not coaching them. Well, I can tell you. Oh, I can tell you now that the shade, okay, when we started it, we still read the end. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, that's, that's where I want to know the if they back. would treat it like the five. Because of the width of the back, we still read the five technique. Yeah. If those guys showed up. We had a shadow cut behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, to start the playoff, all right, communication, all right, center declares the front. So um, when you got a center like, uh, like Dom coming up, He'll come up to the line of scrimmage. He'll declare whatever the front is. And because of the, um, the old lines all in tune, they know kind of roughly as soon as he says what the front is, he'll, we'll be able to have an idea of what his call is going to be. All right. Then he declares his block. Um, so if, it, if he's going front side on a, on a nose, um, he might call the guard to work with him. He might make a gap and then make the number ID of whatever linebacker he's working to. Okay. Uh, so communication starts inside out with this play. Okay, combo blocks will attempt to get as many combo blocks as possible, and then uh, and because of the quarterback, the uh, sorry, running back, um, the guys will be able to uh, uh, know how they can, how thick or thin they'll be on those blocks. Okay, and then uh, so for the steps, okay, crucial for the for the uh, for the zone to work. First step sets up the angle of departure. All right, so whether you're a drop step or a lead step guy, okay? And then uh, we'll give up, I, I teach the guys to give up ground. I do take a drop step, okay? It opens up our hips to the play, all right? And then the running back, I want the running back to use the same step and mirror it um, so we're all on the same angle, okay? Uh, you can take a lead step, it's not wrong, just different method than, than what I do, okay? Um, second step replaces the power base, okay? In your power base, all right? So something that you don't even think about, Okay, for your power base, if you go to the bathroom, 
all right? You have to sit down on the toilet. Whatever you naturally get into, that's your power base, all right? Whatever you put your feet at when you drop down, that is your most comfortable position, all right? So uh, if you're a bigger guy like me, sometimes some of these uh, public stalls, uh, you change up your base a little bit, but. Okay, the rest of the steps uh, should continue while maintaining the power base, okay? Um, if I was teaching young guys, okay, I, I would definitely emphasize maintaining a power base all the way through um, and, and with an inexperienced players, as, excuse me, as well. Um, now with older guys, more experienced group, okay, I would consider the following, all right? Um, the, uh, the second step would drive through the crotch of the, uh, of the, of the defender. Okay, so if I'm taking that step, I want to drive it through the crotch, almost kneeing, kneeing him. Um, and then this method allows the players to be a little bit more aggressive. Okay, uh, if you're going with a fullback, all right. Okay, so when I'm under center, I want his heels at four yards. Okay, when I'm in pistol, um, I'll try and get his heels at, at five yards. Okay, offset um, by the tag. Okay, aiming point, okay, on lead zone. He would read the play side tackles block and then take path of least resistance uh, to the alley defender. Okay. And then in a split zone, he'd be coming back across and then he'd be going to the inside leg of the play side of the backside tackle, sorry, and uh, block the first defender that shows up outside of him. All right. Here's my contact info. Um, if you ever need to get a hold of me, uh, you can uh, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, you can email me. Um, on at my Gmail account there. Yeah.